Hi, today I'm going to show you three different ways for subtracting a fraction from a whole number. Before getting into it, never forget that in a fraction like this one, the top number is the numerator and the bottom number is the denominator. Nice! Let's start with the first method. This is the classical method and we will use an example, 3 minus 4 fifths. We have a whole number and a fraction. To find the difference, first, we convert the whole number to a fraction. To convert 3 to a fraction, we just need to put 1 as the denominator. In that way, 3 is equivalent to 3 over 1. Then we have minus 4 fifths minus 4 fifths. And now we need to subtract these two fractions with different denominators. To find the difference, we need the least common multiple of the denominators or the least common denominator. The denominators are 1 and 5. Come over here. 1 and 5. The first multiples of 1 are 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3, then we have 4, 5, 6, and so on. The first multiples of 5 are 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10, then comes 15, then we have 20, 25, 30, and so on. As you can see, the smallest number that we can find on both lists is 5. Then, 5 is the least common denominator. Now, for each fraction, we need an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 5. Let's start with 3 over 1. Pay attention. By what number should we multiply 1 to get 5? By 5. That is correct, because 1 times 5 equals 5. Whatever we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. And 3 times 5 give us 15, 15. Then we have the minus sign and we continue with the fraction 4 fifths. But hold on, this fraction already has a denominator of 5, so we don't need to make any changes, we just put the same fraction, 4 fifths. Then we subtract these two fractions with the same denominator. We have 5 on the left, 5 on the right, we can put 5 on this side and we continue by subtracting the numerators. 15 minus 4 give us 11, 11. The answer is 11 fifths. But there is something else. At this point, we should remember the improper fractions. An improper fraction is a fraction where the numerator, the top number, is greater than or equal to the denominator, the bottom number. 11 fifths is an improper fraction, given that the numerator 11 is greater than the denominator 5. Also, we can convert the improper fractions to mixed numbers. Do you remember how to do that? Pay attention to the following question. So, how many times does 5 go into 11? How many times does 5 go into 11? Well, 5 goes into 11 2 times. And then we multiply. 2 times 5 is 10. To get 11, we need to add 1. One more time. 2 times 5 is 10. To get 11, we need to add 1. And then we keep the denominator the same. 5 come over here. In that way, 3 minus 4 fifths equals 11 fifths or 2 and 1 fifth. Let's continue with the second method. Here comes the mixed number method. I really like this method. Once again, we use the same example, 3 minus 4 fifths. First, we put minus 4 fifths at the end. And pay attention, take a look at this number. The whole number is 3. And then we're going to rewrite 3 as the sum of 2 and 1. 2 plus 1 equals 3, so we don't have any trouble here, right? Next, we rewrite 1 as a fraction here. Yeah, we rewrite 1 as a fraction. And that fraction will be 5 fifths. Don't forget that we can also see a fraction as a division. And 5 divided by 5 gives us 1. We are using the number 5 because the denominator of this fraction is 5. Now we have two fractions with the same denominator. This will be easy. We continue with 2 plus 2 plus. Now we subtract 5 fifths minus 4 fifths. These two fractions have the same denominator. We have 5 over here, 5 over here, 5 one more time. We continue by subtracting the numerators, and 5 minus 4 gives us 1. Take a look at this fraction, 1 fifth. At this point, we should remember the proper fractions. A proper fraction is a fraction where the numerator, the top number, is less than the denominator, the bottom number. 1 fifth is a proper fraction, given that the numerator 1 is less than the denominator 5. So here we have the sum of a whole number and a proper fraction. The sum of a whole number and a proper fraction? Hold on, that is the definition of a mixed number, yeah? A mixed number is the sum of a whole number and a proper fraction. So finally, we will write the sum of 2 and 1 fifth 
a semi number two and one fifth. That is correct. We can rewrite the sum of a whole number and a proper fraction as a mixed number. Also, we can convert a mixed number to an improper fraction. Do you remember those steps? So, pay attention, we're going to convert 2 and 1 fifth to an improper fraction. We we'll start by multiplying the denominator by the whole number, and then we add this result to the numerator. Here we go. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 give us 11. 11, once again. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 give us 11, and then the denominator stays the same. 5, come over here. That's it. Once again, 3 minus 4 fifths give us 2 and 1 fifth, or 11 fifths. Let's finish with this method. Here comes the quick method, and this is the method that I always use. We have the same example, right? 3 minus 4 fifths. To find the difference, we'll start by multiplying the denominator by the whole number, and then we subtract the numerator. That's it, that's it. It's a piece of cake. Here we go, 5 times 3 is 15. Minus 4 give us 11. 11, once again. 5 times 3 is 15. Minus 4 give us 11. And then we keep the denominator of the fraction. 5, come over here. The answer is 11 fifths, but we already know that 11 fifths is an improper fraction, given that the numerator 11 is greater than the denominator 5. Finally, we can convert this improper fraction to a mixed number. So, how many times does 5 go into 11? How many times does 5 go into 11? Well, 5 goes into 11 2 times. And then we multiply. 2 times 5 is 10. To get 11, we need to add 1. One more time. 2 times 5 is 10. To get 11, we need to add 1. And then the denominator stays the same. 5, come here, please. That's it. The answer is 11 fifths or 2 and 1 fifth. As you can see, with the three methods, we have the same answer, 11 fifths or 2 and 1 fifth. Which one is your favorite? Please leave your answer in the comments. That's all for today. If you want to see more examples using the quick method, take a look at this video. And here you have more lessons about fractions. Have a good one and see you next lesson. Bye!